What's up YouTube, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna to be showing you how to install fender flares on my 2020 Tundra Platinum. The ones that we went with are the ones that Toyota basically, if you bought these from Toyota, these are the ones you would get. They're the Bushwhacker pocket style and uh, painted to match, of course, on my magnetic gray metallic on my Platinum here. So I'm gonna show you how to get them installed. I'm also gonna show you um, an extra step that I took to protect my paint. That's one of the biggest complaints and issues with fender flares. After a while, if you wanted to take them off, most people, if not all people who have these flares, they will complain that um, rocks and dirt get behind them and basically act as sandpaper and they can destroy your paint. So I'm gonna show you an extra step that I took to prevent that from happening if you ever choose to take these off. So let me get the camera set up. What you're looking at, I'm gonna show you the driver side install. So you're looking at the two driver side flares here. I'll show you everything that comes in the kit as we're going along here, but it's, it's a pretty straightforward and pretty easy install. And again, I will show you that extra step that I took to protect the paint on the truck. So, all right, let me get the camera in position and I'll show you what we gotta do first. So we're gonna start with the driver side front fender flare. Basically, all you need to do to get the truck ready is there are two 10 millimeter bolts in the front of the truck, one here and one here that we have to remove. You could also use a Phillips head screwdriver, whatever works better for you. And then you would have to remove the factory mud flap. Mine is already removed because of my 35s. I do have a video on the channel showing what I had to do to fit these 35s. I'll put the link up above if you wanted to check that out. Um, but mine's already removed. You will have to remove the factory mud flap if it's not, if you didn't already remove that. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove those 10 millimeter bolts on the front and uh, we'll, we'll move on from there. Okay, so once you have those two 10 millimeter bolts removed and the factory mud flap removed, you're now ready to start installing the, the flare onto the front of the truck. Your kit is gonna come with two pieces that look like this. They are labeled very faintly. I actually had to look really close. It's not really etched in there or anything, but there is an LF on this piece here for left front. The left is considered the driver's side. And when you're looking at the piece, this is how it's gonna go into the truck. Um, so you can see it has two kind of half moon cutouts. That's gonna be facing you when you go to put it in the truck. So again, half moon cutout, half moon cutout. And then before I actually put it up there, what you can see, um, it has two clips that you can tell bolts are gonna screw into. Those are not the clips you're gonna be using for this part. There's two other holes that do not have a clip on them. One here and one here. Those are the, the holes that we're gonna use to, to put this up into the truck. These other two spots are what the flare is gonna bolt into. So all you're gonna do is you're gonna take two of the 10 millimeter bolts that they supply with the kit. And again, the half moon facing you like this, you're gonna take this and this is gonna screw into I'll put a picture up on the screen. I'm sure you've probably seen them, but if you've ever looked in your wheel wells of your truck, there's these like plastic, I don't even know what to call them. I, I, want, I almost wanna say a rivet, but that's not really what they are. I'll put the picture up on the screen. That's actually what you're gonna be screwing up into. I was kind of surprised by that um, when, I, you know, when I looked at these flares that you're basically just securing them into plastic, but that's, that's how Toyota has built the truck and that's what we're using this to secure all of this, um, all of the hardware with the flares. So again, using those two holes that do not have the clips on them, I'm just gonna pop one of the 10 millimeter bolts up there and you're gonna line it up. I'm just gonna get it started just to kind of hold it. Take the other one and it does line up perfectly. And again, as you can see, the half moon cutouts are facing me. It'll really only go on there one way. If you try to put it on any other way, it's not gonna line up properly. It's just not gonna look right to you. So once you, once you have it facing the right way with those half moon cutouts facing you, you, you'll see it'll fit right up there. So again, in the LF, that's the left front or the driver front. All right, so I'm just gonna tighten these two down. Now you don't wanna go crazy tightening these down. Again, you're only screwing into plastic. You can snug them, but don't, don't go overboard with tightening, tighten these, tightening these down. Next step is securing the flare to the truck. Now, before you do that, my the instructions that come with the flares actually tell you that you have to put this rubber gasket on and also put, these are T45 bolts. Um, the instructions say that you have to do that. Mine came already done like that. I don't know if they do that for everybody. I, I'm really not sure. The instructions do say that you have to do those two steps yourself. Mine came already prepared to go onto the truck. If yours does not, 
The instructions are very clear on what you have to do there. This plastic, I'm sorry, not plastic, this rubber gasket basically just goes all around the edge. That's what is gonna um, go up against the truck. That's the only basically contact point up against the, the painted part of the truck. And that's where the issues come in um, you know, for, for guys who say that they have paint damage and everything, that's where the issue comes in. And we're going to talk about that a little bit more as we go along here. But if yours did not come with that rubber trim on there already and the T45 bolts in there, very simple to do. Just take your time and do that. Um, so you, you can't really mess that part up. They only go on one way. So, all right. But again, mine did come like that. So if once you have the flare ready to go onto the truck, all you're going to do is you're going to take another one of your 10 millimeter bolts that they do supply. And speaking of 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter bolts, the two that you take out of the front of the, the wheel well here, you can discard them. You don't need them. They do supply new ones, just so you know you don't have to reuse them. So what you're gonna wanna do is line the flare up to the truck. And the first two bolts that we're gonna put in are the two bolts that go in that piece that we just secured to the truck. So you're gonna have to kind of get your head up underneath there a little bit. This would be easier if you took the wheels off, but that's kind of overkill to me. You can easily do this without doing that. But as you can see, there's holes all along the fender. Or I'm sorry, the flare. So you're just gonna take your bolts and line it up to the truck and then get these two bolts started just to kind of secure the truck. I'm sorry, the flare. So again, you're gonna kind of have to get your head up underneath here. making sure that it's lined up properly. And it takes a little bit of, you know, you might have to mess with it a little bit. You kind of have to push the flare into the truck. Just make sure that rubber gasket stays on there. Once you get it started, you could then let go of the flare. We'll get the other one started here. And I'm not sure what you saw, if you could see what I did there, but I, I kind of had to take the flare and push into the truck like i had to kind of push this bottom part up and in in order for those holes to line up and then you can get those two bolts started once you have those two started the rest of it's really easy there's five more that you're going to see that we just have to put the 10 millimeter bolts in and that's what secures it to the truck i don't tighten any of them down yet so i'm going to these two i just have you know they're not tightened at all just enough to hold it there. I'm gonna get the other five started, not tighten anything, and then I'm gonna show you what I like to do um, before I go ahead and you know do the final bolting down. So I'm gonna get, get these five started. And don't be afraid to maneuver the flare a little bit as you're you know trying to line up the holes. They may not line up 100% perfectly when you just get the first couple started. As you go along, the, the last couple should line up pretty good but don't be afraid to, to manipulate the flare a little bit if you need to push it around, um, you know, just to line up the holes. Just be careful and make sure that rubber gasket is there so you're not rubbing it up against your truck. Okay, so we now have all seven bolts started in the, in the first flare. Again, I did not tighten any of them down. The next thing I like to do is they send you this little tool in the kit with the flares. It's got a hooked end and a straight end. The hooked end, this is what you're supposed to do with it. You're gonna supposed you're supposed to hook it behind the top part of the flare so you can see where I have it right there and then just run it all along I'm trying to do this camera in one hand and tool in the other so bear with me here but just slowly run it along that rubber gasket and basically what that's doing is make sure making sure it's seated properly all right, and then once you, once you have that done with the hooked side, you then go back and take the flat end and put it up underneath. Sorry, let me get you in frame there. Again, I apologize. I'm trying to do this one-handed. So you put the, the flat end underneath the other side 
as you can see there it's on the bottom side of the rubber gasket now and do the same thing just very carefully run it whoops it may slide out on you if you have to just go back and start at the beginning which i'm going to do so i don't scratch anything again i'm trying to do this one-handed here while holding the camera so this is very simple but again all you're doing by doing this the, these two steps you're just making sure that gasket is seated properly and where it should be all right so once we have that done the instructions don't tell you to do this this is just something i like to do i like to then take my finger and just run my finger almost like you're you're running a bead of caulking all along the truck and what that does it seats the the rubber gasket i don't know if it's coming out on camera but it actually helps seat the rubber gasket up against the truck let me see if i can show you right here so you can see there's kind of a gap right there in the gasket now watch what happens after i rub my finger over it you can see there is no more gap so it kind of just seats that rubber gasket up against the truck minimizing the chance of any dirt or debris getting behind there because again that's what scratches your paint all right so now i'm going to go back tighten down all seven um all seven bolts and that installation is finished so i'll tighten down those seven bolts and um, i'm going to do one more pass with the the plastic tool after i have those seven bolts tightened down and then we'll move on to the back and again guys as you're doing this don't tighten them down you can snug them by all means but don't really go crazy and um you know torquing these down because again you're only screwing into plastic so what i do is i just go i'll feel it start this to, to tighten up and then i'll go maybe another quarter to a half turn after that Okay, now the front driver's side fender flare is completed other than the paint protection film that I'm gonna show you after we do the rear. I'll show you what we have to do to get that film underneath to protect the paint um, from all the damages and scratches that people report with fender flares. One thing I should have mentioned, guys, before you do anything as far as installing these flares, you wanna make sure your truck is as clean as possible for obvious reasons you never want any dirt or debris behind the flares so even the, even the flares i mean they're obviously brand new but just make sure if you set them down somewhere or something make sure there's no debris especially on the back of that black rubber gasket because that's where the dirt can get trapped and really do some damage to your paint so i did do that off camera before we even started this i cleaned the truck i used alcohol I just I like using alcohol um, you know to get a surface prepped for any kind of project so that'll also come in handy when we do the paint protection film portion of the video um, that film sticks to your truck anytime you're doing anything like that alcohol is probably one of the better cleaners that you can use for the surface so all right so for the rear of the vehicle there are no brackets that we bolt up onto the the wheel well there literally I'm sorry, the only thing you do have to do, you do have to remove the rear mud flaps. Mine are already off. Um, very simple to do, just a couple bolts and uh, a pop clip up underneath. The instructions are very clear on how to do that. Um, very simple process. So once you have that rear mud flap removed, again, there is no support bracket up top. You're just gonna take the fender. Rubber gasket's already on. The T45s are already in it. Again, all four of my flares came like that. You're gonna start up the top. And you're going to do two or three bolts up the top just to hold the flare in place like we did in the front as you go around and do there's eight total bolts 10 millimeter bolts that are supplied in the kit that are going to hold this in place and then one push clip up underneath the the bottom um, of the of the rear flare so i'm just going to go ahead and get a bolt started Again, you'll probably have to get your face up underneath there Once you have one in there, as you can see, you can let go. The 
And same thing with the rear flare here. What I'm gonna do is just get all eight started. I'm not gonna tighten any of them down because we're gonna do the exact same process with that white tool that they send you to make sure that gasket is um, properly seated. And I'm gonna do the same thing with my finger as far as running it along the gasket after we use that tool to make sure it's pushed up against the truck. So once you have all eight bolts started, again, I did not tighten them down. There is two, There are two pop clips that come in the kit that look like this. Um, one goes in each rear, basically up underneath where you remove the factory pop pin to get the factory mud guard off, mud flap off. That's where you're gonna put these pins. I'm not gonna put this in just yet, only because you're gonna see what we have to do next to do the paint protection film. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my white tool, just like we did in the front, make a couple passes on it, tighten all eight bolts down, make another pass with the hook end, the flat end, and my finger, and then I'll show you what we need to do to get that paint protection film installed on the truck and uh, you know to prevent any damage underneath the flares. All right, once you tighten down the eight bolts on the rear flare and you put the push pin up underneath in the spot that I showed you, if you are not gonna use the paint protection film, if you're gonna skip this step, you are now done with the driver's side. The install is complete. That simple, very easy process. We're gonna do the paint protection film in order to save our paint. In case we ever do wanna take these flares off, this will work. Um, the reviews on this are fantastic. So I'm gonna show you what we have to do to install the paint protection film. I will put a link down below the video um, in the information section below the video with links to the film that I'm using. Very simple process. This gets a little time consuming and tedious though, but it's very simple to do. So all we're gonna do now with the flares on the truck is you're gonna take some kind of painter's tape or whatever just make sure it's you know a sensitive tape you don't want to damage the paint um, by any means so i have a roll of blue painter's tape here they do make um some trim tape as well that's very skinny it's it, it, the kit that i saw was like 90 bucks and it came with the paint protection film and the 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 trim um tape but it was like 90 bucks I got this roll of tape at Walmart for $3 and the paint protection film, I believe if I'm not mistaken, I think I paid 19 for. So for 22 bucks, I got the tape and the film. And again, I will put links down below. So what you're gonna do, again with the flare secured onto the truck, we have to outline the flare with the blue tape. And I'm gonna leave just a little bit of a gap, maybe an eighth of an inch, maybe a little bit more of a gap. Now this is very important. You want nice clean lines. So take your time doing this, make, make sure your tape, just make sure you have a nice clean edge because what we're gonna do once we have the, the tape outlined on the flare, we're then gonna remove the flare from the truck and that's how we're gonna put the film on. So again, very important to have a nice clean line to follow as you're doing this tape. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start tracing around the flare with the tape. As you get down to this portion of the front flares, you're running out of real estate to work with because the flare basically comes up to the split in between the front fender and the door. So as you get down close to here, you pretty much just have to rip the tape off there and um, do the best you can. But again, you don't have much room to work with there. The paint protection film is pretty much gonna run right up to the edge of the, the fender there. So let me take the camera off I'll give you a look at the gap that I left and then we'll get the flare removed and I'll start the, the paint protection film. All right guys, so you can see, you know, I left a very small gap in between that rubber gasket and the blue painter's tape. Pretty even all the way around. Again, if I had to measure, I, I guess maybe an eighth of an inch somewhere around there, but you just want to have a, um, a nice little small gap there so i'm going to go ahead and get the flare removed just by re uh, reversing my steps of putting it on the only thing we don't have to do we do not have to take off we just have to remove the flare we don't actually have to take off that bracket that we put up underneath here you can leave that on so i'm going to go ahead and take the flare off i won't show that on camera you're literally just taking the bolts out and taking it off and then we'll pick up there 
Okay, so as you can see, this is what we're left with once you remove the flare. And again, you do not have to remove that bracket we put up underneath there. All I did off camera, I cleaned it with alcohol once again. And all I use is this here, 70% rubbing alcohol. Um, just make sure the surface is nice and clean. You do not want anything on there. So all we're gonna do is take the 3M, the 3M Scotch Guard paint protection film. I got the size that I got, which I will put a link down below. It was six inches wide by, I believe, six foot long. And it was plenty to do the truck because what you're gonna do, you're gonna cut it into skinnier strips like this. You don't have to cover this whole area. There's only, the only part that the flare comes into contact and you have a risk of damaging your paint is where that rubber gasket is. And that's a very small, strip that goes around the the fender here if you ever saw pictures of paint damage from a fender flare you'll see it's kind of just like a skinny line where the paint will get damaged again it's only from that rubber gasket so you only need skinny strips like just like this so what you're going to do is you're going to take the paint protection film it's clear it's got a gloss to it once you put it on unless you're up close you won't even know it's there you cannot see it um, so now what you're going to do is you're just going to start and just follow the blue tape and I'm going to take the film, the paint protection film, just about right up to the edge of the blue tape. Just kind of picture where that black rubber gasket will be and this is why it's so important when you're taping the flare off with the blue painter's tape. Make sure you leave that just a tiny little gap there because now we're going to take this to the edge of the blue tape. So when we remove the tape, put the flare back on, you may see just a little bit of an edge of this clear tape, but again, you won't see it unless you're up close to the truck. I want that little bit of an edge. I've seen people do it where they have this, like it's completely hidden behind the flare. I don't like that because the flare does kind of flex a little bit and does rub a little bit. So you're still risking the damage. I want to see just the tiny edge of this 3M tape. Um, I'm not worried about it because if you take two or three steps back, you won't even know it's there. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start following the blue painter's tape, just taking my time. When you're going around the corners, it is gonna kinda wanna bubble up on you. And what I do with that is, as I'm going around the corner, I'll show you actually as I'm doing it. So let me get started and then I'll show you what I do once we come to the corners and it kinda wants to like bubble up on you. This is very stretchy as well, so it's very easy to work with. All right, so let me go ahead and get started. Okay, so as you can see, we're right here at the corner and this is where it's gonna to wanna to kind of bunch up or bubble up on you. So as you're starting to make the corner, all you gotta do is take your pair of scissors and just make a little slit or a couple little slits in the bottom of the tape and that'll help it come around that corner as smooth as possible. Now it is still gonna bubble up just a little bit, but it's not gonna matter once we, once we get it all laid down you're going to be able to kind of trim it in a way and also I'll give you an up close look here it's okay if it bubble if, if it kind of bunches up just a little bit in that little section because number one you're never going to see it and number two even if a little bit of dirt does get up underneath where it bunches up this paint doesn't move so it's not going to damage your paint because this paint isn't going to flex, or I'm sorry, this film isn't going to flex like the, like the fender flare does. So even if you do get a little bit of a bunch here, I'll take a picture and show you what I mean. Um, I'll take a picture with my phone. I'll put it up on your screen there. But if you make those little slits as you're coming around the corner, um, that'll help keep this bunching up to a minimum. And the little bit of a bunch that you do get right there, never going to bother you. You're never going to know it's there. You're never going to see it. All right, so now we can just continue making our way down the fender.
and then once we get to the bottom of the fender here you can just cut it off right there peel off the backing and I'll seat that last tiny little bit there and again when you get down let me reposition the camera a little bit better so you can see what I'm talking about um, but when you get down to this portion of the fender the, the film is literally coming right to the edge of the the gap in between the fender and the door because the fender flare itself comes right about to there so when you get right about down here where the tape ends you're just going to kind of follow the edge of the fender with the edge of the film so let me give you a little bit i'll take the camera off the stand and um as you can see i was just kind of working it down as i was going this is very pliable very stretchy very easy to work with especially if you do it when it's warm out and if you couldn't tell by the sweat on me it's like 95 degrees today so this stuff is very easy to work with and it's it's nice and thick um so it will protect that paint i will do a follow-up video of course in a few months just to let you guys know but this is very good uh, very good stuff for 20 bucks to protect your paint protect your paint all right, so let me get the camera. I'm going to peel the blue tape off. Let me get the camera, and I'll show you what this film looks like up close before we put the flare back on. So we have the blue painter's tape removed. And as you can see, even up close before I put the flare on, you can't see that film well at all where it's laid nice and flat. Again, these tiny little bubbles like the, you see right here, I don't, yeah, I think that's coming out on camera. You don't have to worry about that. I mean, if you really wanted to, if it's going to bug you, you could peel the this you can peel this up and then stretch it and lay it back down um but that's not going to matter once the flare's back on you're never going to see it no one's ever going to know it's there so once you smooth this tape out there's another bubble right there i may i'm anal with this stuff so i may end up peeling it up you don't have to if you don't want to but that's not going to matter as long as this top edge you get up close here so you can see here's the film starts right here ends right here it's just that about it's about an inch wide um and that's what we put on the truck right here is where i was talking about where um it's going to want to kind of bunch up on you because that's a that's almost a 90 degree turn make those little slits like i showed you like we talked about and then you can kind of fold them over and what i'm going to do is i'm going to take a small pair of scissors and even just kind of trim that off a little bit just make sure you don't trim too much because you don't want to expose the paint you do want the paint covered i may even just leave that alone because the the rubber gasket's going to sit up here up above that so that's not even going to matter all right so as you can see we took it all the way down here's where it's right to the edge of the door and we took it all the way down up underneath there all right, so let me get the flare back on and I'll show you what it looks like once we have, um, you know, the whole installation complete. One other thing I am going to do, guys, I am going to make, I'm going to take my X-Acto knife and slit the tape right here from the front, from the fender and the front panel here. So I'm going to slit it right in the middle and then kind of wrap it up underneath both pieces. So let me show you what I'm going to do. Just be nice and careful, obviously. Do not want to hit your paint with an X-Acto knife. So we're going to make that slit all the way down. Make sure you have a nice sharp blade. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my fingernail and just kind of run my fingernail in there. So that way it's tucked up underneath that panel and then up underneath this panel all right so that's up to you if you want to do that part just makes it look a little bit neater a little bit cleaner all right so let me get the flare back on and i'll show you how it looks okay there's the completed front driver's side of the truck flare back on film is on underneath as you saw and as you can tell that film i mean i'm only about a foot and a half away from it and I can barely see it. If I didn't know it was there, you would never know. And I'll get you an up close look. But as you can see, and this is why it's so important to have that nice clean line when you're using that blue tape. So let me get you up really close. As you can see the edge right, you can kind of see it just sticking up past that rubber, rubber gasket there. So now as, this is up to you how much you want that to stick up or again i have seen people that want it completely hidden down underneath 
Again, I like that very slim edge sticking up past the gasket for obvious reasons. If the flare flexes as you're driving, it's gonna protect it and it's never gonna rub up against the paint of the truck. So that is how you install the paint protection film. Nice clean line with that blue tape. Take the flare off. Get that film on there and just take your time doing it, guys. It's not hard at all, just a little time consuming to make sure you do it properly. All right, so as you guys can see, very simple process to do. The flares themselves are super easy to install. The paint protection film, just an extra step, in my opinion, well worth the time. Not hard to do at all, it just does take a little time to get it you know, um, done properly and make sure you have nice clean edges so you can't even tell that it's there unless your face is right up on the flare. All right, so I will put links down below that 3M um, paint protection film, $19 off Amazon. Plenty, I actually have some left over after doing all the flares. I'm not gonna show the other three flares on camera. It's literally the same exact process for all four. Um, so once you get that film on, once you take the flare off, get that film set where it needs to be, it's the same process to put the flare back on the truck. So, you know, I just get it seated, you know, I get all the bolts started, don't tighten anything down. Make sure you use that white plastic trim tool to have that gasket seated properly and then tighten all your bolts down, run your finger across it so it's seated up against the truck nice and neat, and uh, that's all there is to it. So hopefully you guys found this helpful. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, as always, leave them down below, and we'll get them addressed for you. So, all right, until next time, we'll see you on the next video, guys. Take care.